if f of t is cos a t, what is the Laplace transform if f of t is cos a t? Now, the Laplace transform of cos of cos a t is given as is given as s over s squared plus a squared. We want to see how that is coming about. Okay. The Laplace transform of cos a t is given as s over s squared. s squared plus s squared. We want to see how it is coming about from first principles, isn't it? Because the sisters, when they will tell you to get it from first principle, meaning this is a predefined formula, isn't it? Now, if you remember the Euler's equation, the Euler's equation in complex numbers. So the Euler's equation in complex numbers, if you had exponential j theta, exponential j theta was giving you cos theta plus j sine sine theta. But here our parameter, our variable is t, isn't it? So you therefore recognize that the exponential jt is giving you cos t plus j sine, meaning where there is theta you would take, isn't it? The Euler's equation, isn't it? So if you look at the cosine function, meaning if it is if you now extend it to now be exponential j a t instead of t, where there is d you put a t now, there's now constant a, isn't it? Are you seeing that? When there's now constant a, it means a t. So anywhere you see t, you put a t, isn't it? So exponential j a t will be cos a t plus j sine sine a t. Are you seeing that? Senior, yeah. that is the Euler's equation. So if you look at this, the cos a t is the real part. It's the real part, isn't it? And the sine a t is the imaginary the imaginary part, which will be denoted by some, such kind of symbol. Are you see that? Come on, come on. So it means when we want to get the Laplace transform of cos a t, we will be using the Euler's equation, and the real part will give you the solution of cos a t, and the imaginary part will give you the solution of sine sin a t, meaning you can get the Laplace transform of cos a t and sin a t at the same time using Euler's equation. Are you getting the idea here? So it means when we are looking for cos a t, we are taking the real part, meaning cos a t from here, and you can see it is the real part of exponential j a t. Isn't it? Are we together? And you can see sin a t, you can see sin a t is the imaginary part of exponential j j a t. Meaning when you when you take exponential j a t to represent when you take exponential j a t to represent cos a t, then at the end of the solution you will take its imaginary part to represent sine, and you will take its real part to represent cos. Are you seeing the concept? Yes. Because you want to represent cos a t with exponential j t, so you are going to interpret exponential j t, and at the end of integration you are going to end up with the two parts, isn't it? Then which part are you picking? If it is cos, it is the real part of what you've integrated, isn't it? If it is sine you are looking for, then it is the imaginary part of what you have integrated. Because it's the sine, it's, it's what is having the imaginary unit j. Are you seeing that? So instead of integrating cos a t, we integrate exponential j, j a t and we take this real part, part which is cos a t. Is that well understood? Yes. That is the shortcut. But if you move with cos a t exponent, you will still get it, but you do the manipulation of the integral, which is a long process, isn't it? Yeah. Good. So can we now do that, having understood the Euler equation? So you see now we are going to represent the imaginary part, and now we are going to represent the real part. It is not like a, 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 an integral of a close, of a close surface. No, you make it very small, not to be a case of an integral, okay? You make it a simple, which is very small, but it looks like integral of a close surface, isn't it? But it is very small, okay? Good. Now, let us start, ladies and gentlemen. We want, this is what we know we should get, isn't it? That is what we know we should, we should get. So can we now get it? Start by definition. The Laplace transform of, the Laplace transform of Ft is given by the integral from 0 to infinity of ft exponential.
exponential negative std dt, isn't it? Exponential negative std dt. Then where there is ft, we put our ft. Our ft is cos is cos at. So that is the integral from zero to infinity cos at exponential negative st dt. Are we together? Then what is cos at? Cos at is the mean part. It is the mean part of exponential j at. Meaning when we now want to eliminate cos at, we put real part of exponential j at. Have you seen what I've done? See how explain how that is done before? It is the real part of the exponential j at. Then you continue there, you have your exponential negative std dt. So this I'm showing that you are only interested in the real part of that integral, isn't it? Are we together? The r is used to denote the real, the real part. So you go on, that is the, the real part, the integral from zero to infinity, the same base you, same base with multiplication sign, you add the powers, isn't it? And remember, your negative must be left outside, see there? So if you remove your negative outside, many in this case you will start, isn't it? So it will be st by st, remember you are also going to factor st outside, so what do you get? S minus minus J A into T. See that's what it's going to be. See this one is positive. Look at this. Because from by definition you must leave negative and T outside, isn't it? Meaning in each and every time you must remove negative T. If you remove negative T here, here negative T here, you remain with negative A J, isn't it? If you remove negative T here, you remain with S alone. And that is what we have when we will arrange it to S to start. Are we together there? Very good. Then from there you can now do the integration, isn't it? So we are looking for the real part of what? When you integrate an exponential function, the derivative of the other function must be a constant, isn't it? So it means when you are going to differentiate, the whole of this is a constant, only t is a variable, because this is with respect to t, you only t, isn't it? Only t is a variable. So if you differentiate t, you get one, meaning the whole of this part is a constant, isn't it? So when you integrate an exponential function, it remains the way it is, exponential negative into s minus j a t then over the constant, which is negative s into j a. The whole of that is constant, only t is a variable, meaning all this is a constant. Are we together? Yes. Then are we together? Then you divide by the whole of that constant, isn't it? Then you put the limits of the limits of integration, isn't it? Is that okay? Yes. You are not seeing it? What? You will say that my, the constant is minus and you have the S minus A. A. Then we have differentiated that in to read the discount to it. Mm. I'm seeing you still continue with the, uh, the T of the minus. minus. This one. The exponential function remains the way it is. The way it is. Then you divide by the constant of that in a function. Are you seeing it as remain the way you are seeing it there? See, so that is what I keep on saying. Very good. It remains the because that was coming from the concept of an integral substitution, isn't it? Which we don't want to repeat here because it was in calculus too, isn't it? Are we together? So from here, are you? The constant outside, isn't it? So the constant outside will be what? Hmm? Negative? Okay, okay. Let me put it this way. There's a, there, 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 there's a part. Okay, let us just do that. You have one over. Negative? S minus, that is what it is, because we are factoring this constant outside, then you put your R, isn't it? See, that is the procedure. See, this, the whole of this is a constant. See, the whole constant goes out. Yes. See there? So it is 1 over negative S minus J, then R into, this is now what we are substituting the limits on, isn't it? When it is infinity, where the steam put infinity, it will be negative over a very big number. Exponential raised to negative over a very big number is? Is zero, isn't it? Then if t is zero, the whole of this will go to zero, isn't it? So exponential raised to power zero is 
is one. Are you saying that? Yes. Meaning we refer to Christ this first and last time. What we are left with inside the stage. So we start where there is still put infinity. Infinity is a very big number, isn't it? So you just put in your calculator exponential negative of a very big number, isn't it? And that gives you zero. Then where there is still put zero times everything else to zero. So you get exponential zero. Anything raised to power zero is, is one. Isn't it? So ladies and gentlemen, what do we have here now? Remember, this R, you are supposed to, you are just supposed to put it in front here, isn't it? In front of everything, isn't it? Like that. So what do you get there? Zero minus one is negative one. So negative one cancels with this negative. So what do you remain with? We remain with the real part of, real part of one over S minus, minus J A. Because this negative outside will go with the negative one which is inside, isn't it? Are we together? So this, we want the real part of this. What do we do? We rationalize the denominator to get rid of the complex number j in the denominator, isn't it? When you want to rationalize the denominator, you change the sign in the middle only, the complex conjugate, isn't it? You change the sign in the middle only to get its complex conjugate, meaning the complex conjugate of s minus j a is s plus it remains the way it is only the sign in the middle only is what you alter then that gives you its conjugate are you seeing that then you have to do the same in the numerator to balance isn't it it is like you are multiplied by one because this cancels with that isn't it are we together yes are we saying we personalize the denominator so what are we remaining with we are remaining with we need the real part of in the numerator what do we have one times s plus j a isn't it so there will just be s plus j a then in the denominator is what a difference of two squares a difference of two squares when it is in case of a complex number a complex number z times this conjugate z z bar is x squared plus y squared in from complex numbers isn't it because the difference of two squares will be x squared minus y squared but j squared is negative one so negative negative changes the sign in the middle of the because it was supposed to be x squared minus jy squared. So j squared is negative 1. Changes the sign to, to positive, isn't it? That is the concept of a difference of two squares, or the concept of the complex conjugate, isn't it? So it means here you will only take the, the constants. j squared has already changed the sign in the middle to positive, isn't it? So you start, s squared becomes s squared, then s squared becomes a squared like that. A concept of the complex conjugate, a difference of two squares in case of real numbers, isn't it? Are we together? Yes, because j squared gives you negative one, which has changed the sign of a difference of two squares to positive, isn't it? Are we together? Now, what do we now need there? We need to read this thing has two parts because this is the common denominator, it's like a x here, isn't it? So it's like we are looking for the real part of what? Here we have s over s over a squared plus a then it is plus j into a over a over a squared plus a squared are you seeing the way it is because this is a over a squared plus a squared and this is j a over a squared meaning a squared is the common denominator for both of them are you seeing now separated the real part with the imaginary part are we together now which term was the real part the real part is the part without j isn't it so when you the real part of this complex number, this is the real part, this is the imaginary part, isn't it? So pick the real part. What is the real part? Meaning once you pick the real part, R is gone, isn't it? So the real part is the part without J, this part, isn't it? Are we together? So the real part is S over over S squared plus plus S squared. And that real part is there. Is this what is supposed to be equals 80? Because this is supposed to be, it was cos 80 plus j side 80, meaning this real part is the cos. So it means this is the, the Laplace transform of sine 80. Are you seeing that? Are we together? Good. So you found the Laplace transform of cos 80 from first principle to be s over s squared plus plus a squared. Are we together, gentlemen? Laplace transform is very, very important and is very critical in this your in this your course. Okay? You have to pay a lot of attention to A. Let us see Roman 4 because we've seen how the cos 80 has come about. Now, what about sine 80? Meaning, when we are looking for the Laplace transform of sine 80, we are going to get A over S squared plus because it is the imaginary part, isn't it? Are we together? Good. Can we do that?
Romain Abafo, go 